What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. It's another Saturday. Today is Saturday, and that means we're having another Saturday tournament. This is actually the last Saturday before Nationals, and uh, today we're going to cover probably my favorite deck going into Nationals. Uh, everybody knows that I love this deck. I won states with it. Very consistent. It's really, really good. Item Lock is probably one of the strongest things in the format right now, and today we're talking about Best Queen Vileplume. Now, the list we're actually looking at is has been seen before, not on this channel, but Andrew Wayball used this list to win his Missouri States the weekend I won my Mississippi States. Now, my I think the difference between my list and his is he didn't play. I didn't play AZ Lysander. I think I played like uh maybe like three Sycamore, four Love Balls. So I can't remember 100 my list off the top of my head right now. But the list that we're using today is actually his list because I think his list is probably one of the best lists out there. Uh, a lot of people are going to argue with me saying like Revitalizer is needed in this deck. We'll go over that here in a second. And if you want to read about Andrew's report down below in the description will be a link to his uh, article where he talks about how he won and why the deck is so good. This, this talk back in states, but still the same concept applies here. It pretty much shuts down a lot of things, get a turn of album, and I still love this deck like I, I still think it's the strongest deck in the format right now i don't know what really beats it i mean like like there's cards that beat it but there's not a certain deck that is like destroys it uh giving it a near auto loss uh, but let's go over the deck and let's see what's it about now our main attacker is going to be best queen best queen has the beer revenge attack it does 20 and this attack does 10 more damage for each pokemon in your discard pile so obviously we're going to put a bunch of Pokemon in the discard pile, preferably 16, and knock out the act Pokemon with 180 HP. We play a 4-4 four, four line of that because that is our attacker, and a 4-4-3 four, four, line of Valplume. Valplume has the irritating pollen. Trust me, your opponents are going to be irritated when you put this card down because they can't, neither player can't play idle cards from their hand, and this pretty much shuts down so many decks. If you get the Valplume on the first turn, you're good to go. Like usually, you just went off off of that, and your opponent sometimes just scoops because they can't do anything because their hand might full like Trainer's Mel, Ultra Ball, Battle Crusher, Via Seeker. Like there's so many item cards in this game right now that Valplum makes it worth. Like it's such a good card. Oh man, I love Valplum so much. Uh, so four 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 three line four four three line of Valplum for Shaman EX. And some people will be like, can you play this deck without Shaman? No. You have to play this deck with Shaman. Uh, Shaman helps you set up, draw six cards in your hand, help you draw through your deck really, really quickly. Without this, I promise, the deck will not work. You can maybe go down to three Shaman, but outside of that, I cannot see going lower than three. I don't even want to play less than uh, four because it's so, so good. Uh, but still, Shaman EX is our main draw supporter. We also have four unknown for Feral Letter. This is going to do two things. It's going to let us draw a card by discarding off the bench and it, uh, Fuels are Vessel, Vessel Queen's attack with the Beer Bench because you put more unknowns in the discard pile, so that's a really good thing as well. And we'll play one Bunnelby. Uh, Bunnelby has the uh, Rototill, which is what we're trying to do. Shove a card from your discard pile back into your deck. So that way, if you're about to deck out, you can use Bunnelby to get back crucial stuff. Also, if you have to, like, for some reason, stick them away two DCEs, you can use Bunnelby to get back your two DCs, which is pretty cool. Already two cards in your deck, which is really, really nice. You can also use Burrow. Uh, maybe, maybe your opponent, like, I don't know, got, I don't know, maybe they, like, sick them more three times in a row, they have a really low deck size somehow, and they, you burrow twice to win the game, uh, but mostly for Bunnelby, it's for a run until they get cards back into your deck, so that's all the Pokemon we play, it's 28 Pokemon, but, 28 Pokemon, but out of those eight, there are draw Pokemon featuring the Unknown and the Shaman, so there you go, that's all the Pokemon in your deck, now the deck plays four Acro Bike, Look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, and discard the other card. Of course, it's going to help us draw even more. The whole point of the deck is to draw quick. We're trying to get a turn of Valplume. We're trying to get set up on the first turn, and Acrobike is going to help us. For Battle Crested, which is how we're going to put Pokemon in the discard pile, search your deck for three cards and discard them. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, the main time you're using, the main way you're using Battle Crested is, let's say, turn one, you get an Oddish, right? Then you hit a Battle Presser. Well, the Battle Presser is going to discard the other three Oddishes because you usually only need one Vile Plume. So you, you know, get the Oddish down, uh, Battle Presser, three Oddishes. You do the same thing with Gloom, same thing with Vile Plume. You need to sometimes knock out, like, discard your Force of Giant Plants or your Unknowns early game if you don't. You can't draw them into, or maybe you have a full bench or something. You can't use Unknowns. 
Uh, if you already got a stadium card down the first turn, you can't put another one down, so you obviously don't want to draw into it, which is really good. Two love ball to search for Pokemon 98 HP or less, so this can get you Best McQueen, Combi, Oddish, Gloom, or Unknown. Now, some people are opting to play Revitalizer. Let me pull that card up real quick, and let's go over Revitalizer. I personally am not a fan of... Uh, why am I typing Unknown? I am not a, per a fan of Revitalizer. Uh, I can't spell Revita. There we go. Oh, what? Come on now. I just saw it. Okay, there we go. So Revitalizer says, put two grass Pokemon. Why don't we just cut out air to your hand? Now, some people be like, this obviously combo is well with Battle Presser. But usually, when you you have to like battle or use Revitalizer to get Grass Pokemon out of your discard pile, you're taking away the attack damage from Vesta Queen, which I don't like at all. I hate this concept. And also with Revitalizer, you can't get out unknowns, and that's pretty much the worst thing ever. And also, if you get turn one Revitalizer without a battle pressure, that card is just useless. Like you just can't do anything with it. Like, if for some reason you have to stick more with a Revitalizer, that could have been a Love Ball that you could have used to get out another Pokemon. But instead, you're playing Revitalizer, and you have to discard that instead. Love Ball, I think Love Ball just outclasses Revitalizer so many ways. I mean, it is cool if to help you get the Valplume out easier, uh, because you can just Revitalize it for a Gloom and Valplume automatically. But I don't think this is great. I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be... Yeah, I don't think it's that great overall. Oh, my goodness. We're freezing up here. Hold on. Hold on a second. What's going on? Come on, Pokemon. Oh, looks like my client freezed up. Oh, Pokemon, stop it. Oh, wait, give me one second, we'll fix it. All right, so we're back, but like I was saying, I don't think Revitalizer is that useful in the deck because Love Ball just outclasses overall. I know a lot of people say they like Revitalizer. I personally, personally do not like Revitalizer, and that is the main reason why. All right, so next up is for Trainer's Mel. Go ahead and look at the top four cards of your deck and grab a Trainer card. Obviously, you can grab a Ultra Ball, Battle Presser, Acrobite Forest, uh, Floatstone, a supporter card, really good card, Ultra Ball to discard two cards in your hand to grab Pokemon, of course. For the most part, we're going to be grabbing Shamans. Sometimes we're grabbing Vile Plumes. It depends on the situation. If you already have a Shaman in your hand, obviously you don't need Ultra Ball for a Shaman, but it combos so well because you can Ultra Ball, discard some Pokemon from your hand, and then use Shaman to set up while fueling your Vile, your best queen attack, which is really, really nice. Now, here comes the tricky stuff. That uh that differs from some of the best queen list, and this is supporter cards. Uh, supporter cards are kind of weird nowadays. I know when I played it, I just played like four Sycamore, nothing else, no, no Lysander, no AZ, because I went for a really really like really consistent list, like trying to hit the Sycamore, making sure you don't whiff a supporter card. But uh, Wayne makes a really good point in his article saying that uh, most of the time you really only play two two Sycamores during your whole game. So, cutting down to two is not such a big deal, which I do agree with a lot, because you usually are like, drawing a bunch of cards uh, with a Shaman and Acrobike and Unknowns. You really don't need the Sycamores. Um, so, we play one AZ. Now, the AZ picks one Pokemon from you, from, uh, puts one Pokemon on the field into your hand, discard all cards attached to that Pokemon. Now, this is great, because if your opponent like, licenses up a Valplum and you don't have a Flowstone attached to it, you can AZ pick it back up to your hand. You could also pick up a Shaman to put it back in your hand and maybe reuse it. Uh, AZ is such a clutch card just to pick up any Pokemon that you put a Lysander up. It's a really, really good card. Uh, one a Lysander to bring a Pokemon off the bench. Now, the reason why this is good is because you like sometimes your opponent can like feed you non EX Pokemon and you have to like play like take a bunch of knockouts on non EX Pokemon to win the game. But you, you can maybe like license up an EX Pokemon to take your last two prize cards, or maybe just like as soon as they drop an EX, you can just license or take a knockout. And also, if they're trying to set up Pokemon, you can just license as well. We only play one of those, but hey, it does work out. I promise, especially when your opponent's like I said, is feeding you a bunch of non EX Pokemon to maybe try to deck you out or try to go for like try to go for time or something. You can force a two prize trade, a uh, four two prize. Uh, a take from the Lysander to Sycamore, discard her hand, draw seven cards. Once again, the whole deck is about drawing cards. We have the Shamans, we have the Unknowns, the Acrobikes, the Sycamores, okay? Four Forest of Giant Plants. Now, this is how we're going to get Balfoam and Best Queen on the first turn. Each player's Grass Pokemon can evolve on the first turn that they are played down. So you can automatically get a Balfoam and a Best Queen on the first turn, which is why this deck is so strong. If you get a turn with Best Balfoam, I promise most of your opponents are going to give you a, a not so nice look, and you're going to be like, "I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry," and they're going to be really mad at you. 
Um, which is okay. Uh, two Flowstone to give your Pokemon free retreat, mainly your Vile Plume. Uh, Bundle Beat's another one as well. It has a two retreat cost, but everybody else has a one or free retreat. Uh, Vile Plume does have a three retreat cost, which is why we have to Flowstone on Vile Plume and four DCE. Alright, so DCE, you know, accounts for your B Revenge because it needs two color synergies. Now, some key things that people are going to point out. Obviously, from the start, people are going to be like, oh, you lose the Aegis Slash, and yes, I will gladly take my loss against like Aegis Slash. There's not a lot of Aegis Slashes in this format. Uh, there's only one deck that really, really plays Aegis Slash, and that's the Genesect deck. And even then, if you get a turn on Vileplume, they can Ultra Ball for an Aegis Slash there, so they are forced to draw into it. And sometimes, that is hard to do, and maybe you can win a game that way. Alright? So the other thing as well that people are going to say is that if Giratina uses Chaos Oil, you just lose because now you can't attach any more DCEs. Uh, but what you can do is, like I said earlier with the Lysander, you can maybe knock out the Giratina before it gets set up. It does need two turns before it starts attacking you. So your opponent could maybe like get a turn to attack and knock off your best queen. Getting your only DC off the field and pretty much winning the game from there. If that happens, well, it happens. Go to game two and you try again. But, once again, this follows the same thing as what I said earlier with the Age of Slash. Your opponent can't play Ultra Ball. They can't search for they can't search for Giratina. And also, since they're playing Giratina, they need double Dragon Energies. They only play four of those. So now it's even harder for your opponent to use Chaos Wall because now they can't play Trainer Cards. They can't use Ultra Ball to get out Shamans to help set up. They can't, you know, use Via Ticket for a Supporter Card. So they have to find uh, four, one of those four double Dragons in the deck. So it's not that... It's not, that hard, but it does slow them down a lot since you're playing Valplume. Alright, another card as well is Jirachi. Uh, Jirachi has that Stardust attack saying that if they discard a special energy off your active Pokemon, you cannot attack it next turn. Well, you have two options with this. The first one is you just, uh, you like it up before it comes to the active spot to take a knockout or before it hits you. Because most decks that play it don't have a free retreater from the start. Like, the main deck that even plays this is Greninja. Outside of Greninja, no other deck really plays Jirachi. So, when your opponent, if they're playing Greninja, they can't free retreat their Froakie or their Frogadier. Like, they can free retreat the Greninja, but that's later in the game. That's so late into the game. Um, so, as soon as they put it down, you can just license or bring it off the bench and take a knockout, which is really, really nice. And also, if they do use Sardis, you just wait a turn. You're going to be okay. They have an option now to retreat that Jiraji or start us again, which I doubt they want to start us. And since Jiraji has a one retreat cost, they now have to retreat that Jirachi, maybe swing with an attacker or something, or just pass the Frogadier, and then you have to find another water energy, but you get his license to bring that Jirachi back from the bench into the act spot and take a knockout. Like I said, outside of Greninja, Jirachi is not played anywhere as of right now. This might change, but as of right now, I don't really see it in any other decks, which is really... Really nice. And I'm trying to think of something else. I know Aegis Slash. I know Jiraji. I know Giratina. Uh, those decks are pretty bad. Uh, they're, not, they're not bad. They're not bad. This, the same rule applies to all these. Your, camp, your opponent can't use uh, they can't use item cards to get these Pokemon out. And it's going to be hard for them to find it. Now they, they could open up with it. But so what? That does happen. That's pretty much your only three really bad matchups outside of that i think this deck has positive matchups against everything um the water toolbox has become popular you hit for weakness you you destroy them i guess the only thing is scary is that glaceon if they do somehow get a glaceon out um then you can't hurt him anymore because it makes it where evolutions can't hurt it but the same thing follows you have lysander you can knock him out pretty easily um next up is night march <laughs> Turn one Vileplum, you win, pretty much. And even then, like, you can get a turn two Vileplum, knock out the only attacker. They can't get DCEs because they only play four DCEs. And since you have a Vileplum out, they can't use Puzzle Time. But, of course, they can also Hex Maniac for Puzzle Time and stuff like that. But that's going to be okay. Um, let's see, Greninja, which frogs are weak to grass. Turn one Vileplum, shuts that deck down a lot because your opponent plays a bunch of item cards. So that's really great for you. Uh... Zork, Evital, same thing, Vileplume, shuts that deck down a lot. These Evital decks rely, rely so much on getting out these uh, these trainer cards to help set up. It's really nice. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Mega Quasa might be like kind of hard. If your opponent gets really lucky and they can get Attacker out, if they, if they start swinging with Mega Quasa, you might be in trouble. Your best plan, okay, this is the best plan against Mega Ducks, and I'll tell you right now. Um, usually if you're playing against Megas, you just don't play Vileplume. You just like, just 
just don't, don't worry about Vile Plume. Just discard all your Vile Plume. And so that way you can take one shots on those EX Pokemon. And you're trading one for one. And you're going to win that prize waste because you're taking knockouts on EX. While they only take a knockout on your base on your non-EX Pokemon. Um, if you do this, like you have 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wait, so 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, 22. So you have to might have to discard some Kombis and Best Queens, maybe some Shamans. It's still really hard to beat Mega Rayquaza. You can hit 210 to knock out Manetric EX, but since but Mega Rayquaza has 220, right? I think it's maybe make sure Rayquaza. What's this? What's Rayquaza have? I think it's uh it's 220. Okay, so maybe it's not that hard as I thought. I, th I thought it was 240. Um, Primal Guard up, Primal Kyogre. They have weakness to grass. So don't worry about that. Ooh, Waylord. That's another. That might be another hard matchup as well. Um, because you have to do. 250 damage. You can hit for weakness, but your opponent plays a lot of Zerosic and Team Flare Grunts. Uh, but there you go. That is the best way of deck. I still think this deck is really, really strong. I think it has a lot of potential going into what the meta looks like for Nationals as of right now. This could change within the week, but I think right now this is still one of the strongest decks. But hopefully you enjoy this deck breakdown. Like always for Saturday Tournament, there's going to be three games of Vesco Bob Boom. Hopefully there's some good games, and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in round number one of these Saturday Tournaments. Alright guys, just want to give a quick shout out to our two sponsors, 60 Cards and Yeti Gaming. The links are down below to their websites. Make sure you go check them out. Alrighty.